OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. All right, so welcome everyone. And again, you're here for the right stuff, which is a writing course. And I am, I'm gonna share my, hold on, get my slideshow going here. Hopefully things will wake up. All right, there we go. All right, so I am Francisca Wentworth. I'm one of the um, OTAN SME subject matter expert and I'm presenting on the Write Stuff ESL writing course. And I'm going to let Anthony take it away here. My things are being stubborn here. Okay, there we go. So I know you're going to just want to get a copy of this course. So Anthony is going to take it away here and explain to you what the process is for getting this from the Canvas Commons. Okay, thank you, Francisca. So, um, yes, in the last few weeks, um, we have been fo letting folks know about a new adult education dedicated space on Canvas Commons called the California Adult Education Canvas Commons. And um, this course um, that Francisca is going to introduce today, The Right Stuff, um, Francisca also presented last week on Advanced ESL. Um, some of you are familiar with our Putting English to Work courses. We also have some EL Civics courses as well that we've developed here at OTAN. So all of these courses are going to be available on this dedicated Canvas Commons space. So not in the general Canvas Commons, but this California Adult Education Canvas Commons space. So the process to um, be able to access this course and other courses there is basically your agency needs to let us know that you're interested in joining this adult education canvas common space and as francisca has here on the slide at the very bottom in her third bullet she has a link to a form um, that your agency will fill out it's just ask for a little bit of information again it lets us know that you're interested in joining the Cameron's common space and we'll put the link to that form in the chat in just a second here um, Francisca, do you want to go to the next slide? Oh, my my uh, things are being a little stubborn here. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, depending on how you have Canvas set up at your agency is going to kind of determine um, how um, easily we'll be able to help you get into this Canvas common space and then have access to these courses. So um, some of your agencies are part of something called the Calif uh, sorry, called the Canvas. Well, actually, no, I think it's no, called it's the Cal California. It's called the California <laughs> Distance Oops. Learning Cooperative. <laughs> and we have a link to that also on the OTAN website. We'll share that link to that page in a second here. But some agencies are part of this part of the CDLC. And so if you're part of the CDLC, then um, it's going to be pretty easy to get your agency um, into this Canvas common space. Um, it's, it's pretty automatic, actually. Um, and then one of the things that Francisco is going to talk about today um, that you heard about also last week in the advanced ESL course is that some of the activities that are a part of the Canvas courses um, use some non-native non Canvas applications, in this case, two different ones, H5P and Learn360. So basically what we need to do is work with your Canvas admin to basically enable those or turn on those um, turn on those applications and then you'll be able to, um, when you get your copy of the Canvas courses, you'll be able to use those acti all the activities in the Canvas course, no problem. Um, let's go to the next slide, Francisca. Um, the okay so some of you um, may not have canvas at your agency you may be using the free for teacher canvas courses or free for teacher canvas accounts so in that case um when francisco talks about the activities that use h5p and learn 360 um, we won't be able to help you install those or have those activities um, kind of fully functional in your canvas courses um, because we're not uh, we're not able to make those available in the free for teacher accounts. 
So really, um, the best situation is that you have a Canvas, you already have a Canvas inf instance set up at your agency. It could be through the CDLC, it could be through your school district, it could be through some other um, way that you've set up the instance back at your agency. And in that case, we can work with you to make sure that those activities uh, will work fine in your Canvas courses. Um, but again, if you have the Free for Teacher Canvas accounts, those activities are not going to be, they're not going to work. Um, if you have questions about any of this, you can put your email or name in the chat and we'll reach out to you. Um, you can also reach out to us at OTAN um, and we can follow up with you with um, um, on those instructions. So um, just want to make it kind of clear from the beginning that um, it will take a little work to get access to the Canvas common space, but once you have access to that space, you'll be able to get this course and other courses that are available there. And also you, it's a space that's adult education dedicated. So from your agency, if you have materials that you wanna share with other adult educators, you'll be able to put them in that Canvas Commons space as well. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Francisca. If you have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat and I'll follow up with folks in the chat. All right, thanks Anthony for the clarification on all that. And um, so just, muted accidentally, I was trying to move it. A uh, little background about me. So I'm an OTAN SME, subject matter expert. We've had different names over the years. And I've worked in adult education since 1987. So I was in the first TMAC cohort in 2004. And then 2005, I became a coach. So I was a coach in TMAC and OTAC. And then those two came together and became DLAC. And then I was a coach for DLAC as well. I taught ESL at all levels from literacy to advanced for, uh, for 32 years and initially developed these two courses, the advanced ESL and the right stuff in Moodle. And then with the move to Canvas, um, have transferred them over and redone them, updated, revised them um, with newer content. And they are now both in Canvas. And then I was a director of Jefferson Adult School um, in Daly City um, from 2016 to 220 but I continue to work with OTAN. We don't retire from OTAN. And then I'm having a little trouble. Sorry with my slides moving forward. There we go. All right, so a little background on the course itself. So this is a shared course, as Anthony mentioned on OTAN. Um, I designed it in 2012. And this was actually through, I was funded through um, a grant from Silicon Valley Community community foundation excuse me and then as i said i moved it to canvas and redesigned it in this past year so this course is geared towards high intermediate and advanced esl students although um, at my agency some adult basic edit students also used it but it's mostly focused towards um, english language learners which some of them were in the adult basic education uh, department. So it has been revised, as I said, with new content and new activities. And the goal is to prepare students to transition to college, career, or the workforce, and also to prepare students to enter a college at a higher level ESL, um, you know, for credit classes. And I don't know how it is in different places in California, but our local community college system, um, when students go in at a lower level, they're they're not credit for credit, you know, towards graduation. And it can be used as, as a standalone online course. So if, as part of your distance learning program or as a hybrid blended learning course in, in addition to a face-to-face -face class. So what we're going to do today, we're just going to look through the way the course is structured and some of the type of learning activities, and then I'll take you um, online to the live course. So there's an, at the beginning of the course, there's a student intro module where they have a welcome module and some student support items. Join audio. There's a section on ask the teacher discussion. There's a section on um, just about the teacher, um, an intro section to do with basic computer skills, and then students can build their own uh, dictionary, their own glossary. And then there's some instructions on how they do assignments and class resources. So that's the introduction module. 
And then all the other modules follow the same structure. So they all have an introduction to that particular module and what topic will be covered in that module. Then they'll have, there's a glossary and then vocabulary practice quizzes uh, that go along with the glossary. Then a grammar section, which covers grammar and writing concepts, quizzes based on that grammar instruction, and then writing activities. Some have videos based on some videos. And then there's the discussion for students and then each module ends with a test, a unit test. And then the topics, there are 10 um, modules in this course. And these are the writing skills topics that are covered. So there's basic sentence structure, um, writing mechanics, uh, capitalization, punctuation, word order, and then a module on coordinating conjunctions, a module on subordinating conjunctions. And then uh, unit module five is kind of the meat of a lot of this um, in terms of good writing. So there's a focus on transition words and phrases. And module five is large, so it's divided up into two extra 5A and 5B, all on that transition words uh, topic. And then six is on paragraphs and the structure of a paragraph. Seven is graphic organizers. Eight is informal writing, nine is formal writing, and then 10 is essays and some academic writing. So are there, I'm gonna stop us here. Are there any questions before I take you to the live site? I'm gonna stop my share for a second here. Francisca, I don't see any questions in the chat so far about um, what you presented, so. Good. All right, good, thank you. So let me take you, hold on a second, let me open this and share my screen again. Okay, so hopefully everybody can see that. Okay, so this is the home page. So it just takes you to the right stuff. So it's not going to say master in your course. I'm showing showing you my my course. Um, so the name of the course, and there's a welcome message here, just about writing, you know, describing the course a little bit. And there's also a little PowerPoint narrated. So there's several of these types of PowerPoints in this course where I basically narrate a PowerPoint. And, you know, so it's a little video following that. Then if you move down a little bit, there's a navigation tip. So this just talks about the left side, you know, modules is where students will go. And this is where everything that's in this course is found. And then there are also some links here to the class overview, instructor information, and learning content, which also goes right to the modules. And a little bit of Canvas support for students here. There are some quick links, and these, these go to the modules. This is a page on class resources and a teacher contact page, which you will have to edit with your own information. And then, so that's the home page, and then there's the syllabus. And similar, if you were in the advanced ESL, it has the similar introduction here for instructors only. So when you publish your course, you will want to remove this part. And you just would go to edit and just get rid of it. But I've left it here because there are some resources that you might want to look at for yourself that you could perhaps save somewhere else for your own information. And then here's a brief description of the course and the learning outcomes. And a section on materials, you can edit this if you have a textbook you're using in your class that you want to supplement this course with. You could put it here. This is part of the template. It says book class page. You might want to have that there. If not, you can just delete it. And then supplemental materials, I just added to have a good headset with a microphone and a computer with a good internet connection. So best for students is to use a headset similar to what I'm wearing right now. I find that works the best. And then a little bit about attendance. Again, this is something you can edit, but I just put it in here because it's online. It's met by posting assignments and taking quizzes and exams by whatever due dates are set. And a little bit. Um, 
uh, computer skills, they should know this is especially in discussions that they need. And then there's the announcement. My internet connection is unstable, it's telling me. Don't do that to me. Um, so this announcement page is just a placeholder. So you'll, you'll want to remove this, which you can just delete and then um, put your own announcement to students. Okay, so now we're just going to go to the modules, which is where we'll find everything. And it takes a minute for this to load. I just want to wait till it does its thing here. The very first section that says do not publish, this is just for the teachers. So for instructors only, it says do not publish. And this is some background on the course. Here's what um, Anthony was also talking about. And I'll open this for a second because here's also, and maybe we can put this in the chat, but again, this course actually doesn't have Learn360 in it, the advanced course did, but this is just a generic message for anybody using these courses. And if you have trouble with these functioning, you can contact AE Canvas at SCOI.net. And there's a little thing that'll tell you what they what you'll need to provide them with for that. And then they can make sure that all your external tools, which is what these are, will function correctly. And then there's just a licensing information on this course so that you can look at. So this is this won't be seen by students. This is just for the teachers. OK, so the students, their course will start with this. Welcome to the right stuff. There's a, the overview, which is actually the same little PowerPoint that was on the home page. And then a little video that they can watch about reasons to write. And here I mentioned about the teacher. So this is similar to, it's like what's in the advanced course if you were there. And this is something you would edit. You know, put your own photo, a little background about yourself, contact information. And you can edit this. If you don't have a website, then you could just delete that. If you don't have additional contact information, you could delete that as well and you know, make it work for you. All right, and then the class resources page, which is also linked from the front page. Um, hold on a second. Every time I change, it takes a minute to load. So on this page, again, you can edit. Um, once before you publish, I would take this little to the teacher note out. And I put some things here. There's just a list of irregular verbs, a couple of online dictionaries. And then this, this is something that they'll need for this course. And it's also linked um, within the module. But this is a chart on the, on the connectors, on different types of transition words. So this will be a useful tool for them. And then if you want to add anything else, other helpful resources, you can add that here. Let me just go next here. Oh, we already did that. Hold on. Back to the modules. And then there's a general course glossary. So again, this is just a list of all the words, um, all the vocabulary words in this course. And it's just an alphabetical list. So the, the reason for this is that each unit uh, or each module has a glossary, but students might you know, remember, oh, there was a this word and I don't remember which module it's in, then they can just look it up alphabetically here. And that just, so this is not something they'd necessarily be studying from, but it's a resource just in case they need to find a word that they'd forgotten about. And then students can build their own dictionary. So this, is, I had this in the advanced course as well. So this is just where they, they can edit this page and then add uh, new words for themselves. All right, so that's the end of the student uh, introduction section on that part. And then, then there's just a general overview of resources. So this Canvas, this is a Canvas uh, resource for students. This, if they have questions about just course navigation, things like that, um, it can help them with that. There's a, a section on here on tech skills, which is also in the syllabus, as well as what their computer needs to have. 
and then instructions on how to submit a writing assignment and how to post a recording. There are no, this is a writing course, so there are no speaking assignments in this course, but they do have listening assignments and, and they can post video in the discussions if they want to. So it just shows them what the buttons look like. So for a writing assignment, they have to select start assignment. And after they write um, in the text box, whatever their assignment is, then a submit assignment. And then how to post in a discussion. There's a little, um, oh, hold on. So it's some instructions on how to do that here. And then also a video that shows them how to do it. So they have a couple of ways to, to look at that. Okay. So then after that section, there's just a general, this is like a pre-unit, an introduction module. And this just gives them a, a little welcome to the course, um, some computer vocabulary that they might need, some computer skills practice. This includes you know, so many people now are on cell phones a lot and maybe haven't used a mouse for a while. So if they need to practice using a mouse and some other computer skills, then they can do that here. And then there's a vocabulary quiz um, based on this computer vocabulary. And this is an H5P quiz. And this is actually the same one I put in the advanced because it's really the same topic. So you can tell this is especially you can tell this is an external tool because of the way this is set up. If I look at this in student view, it's even more obvious because it'll say submitting an external tool. So this is how you know this is, you know, incorporated into Canvas, but it's a tool from the outside from another uh, from H5P. And so this is just a drag and drop so they can just do that. And then once they've filled them in, they would click submit and then they would find out which ones they got correct and which ones they didn't. And generally a lot of these quizzes in H5P, they can um, retry. So I'll leave it in student view for the moment. Okay, so now we start the modules. So I just want to show you the basic structure of all the modules. And then I'll come back and show more individual activities. So it starts off with basic sentence structure. And again, there's the intro module with, with the audio uh, that basically speaks and tells them what is written there. So they get to listen and read. And then the vocabulary. So it starts off with just grammar terms. So these are terms, you know, what adjective, object, subject, noun, all these types of terms. And then a crossword puzzle. So this is another, there are several crossword puzzles in this course. Um, this is another H5P external tool um, puzzle. So they would just type in the correct word here, whatever that is, and so on. So if that's just a, I'm assuming that's the answer, <laughs> right? And then they can, they can um, once they go to the bottom, they can just submit they can show the answers if they want to. It's just practice, so it doesn't really uh, matter if they know the answers. So, but it, hopefully they'll do it first before they show their solution. Okay, so that's the crossword puzzle. So then once you're in the, after you've done the vocabulary section, so this vocabulary and then whatever vocabulary list glossary and the quiz that goes with it, then there's the grammar section. So this will explain, and all of these will have a video uh, explaining. So I'll show you this for a bit, just so you can see what it looks like. So this is, again, it's a narrated PowerPoint. So once they open it, we're not going to listen to it, but I just want to show you kind of what it looks like. Um, then pretty much I, I pretty much um, talk about each of these slides that they'll see. And then the same information is, is written in here too with, ex, with examples. So it's talking about the different types of uh, parts of sentences. And then each of the, after the grammar section, there are quizzes related to the grammar section. So we're looking at grammar, then there are a couple of quizzes here. And these, the rocket ship means it's a canvas quiz. 
This is within Canvas. And most of the Canvas quizzes are either, uh, you know, a close, like fill in the blank type of exercise, multiple choice. And in some cases, they have to write sentences. And if that's the case, then teachers do need to grade that. And then the next section is writing activities. So they have a writing activity in, in this module, you know, writing about their country, how they learn, and sentence practice. So the writing modules, they all have a rubric and they're all teacher graded. Since this is a writing course, it's hard to get away from that. And then there's a discussion section here. They're just introducing themselves and then the unit test. So then same structure, unit two is just about some rules. So again, there's the intro module. Now we're talking about the word families. So there's group one word families. All the glossaries moving forward have a Quizlet um, activity. And then an exercise that's generally a fill in the blank and a dictation, and then a, a Canvas quiz. So this is just following the vocabulary. So they get a lot of practice with vocabulary and practicing it in different ways. And in this unit or module, we're talking about um, the mechanics. So the grammar section is capitalization, punctuation, subject verb agreement, and word order. And then Canvas quizzes that are all related to these topics. And then the writing here is some uh, what did you used to do in your country and writing about goals. And sometimes the discussions have more than one. A lot of times in the discussions I have put um, sharing new things that, that they've learned, new words they've learned that they can put in the discussion and share with classmates so that they can yeah, share with each other and, and see what other people have learned. And then another discussion about sharing their goals. And then all the module tests require sentence writing with the word family's vocabulary or whatever vocabulary was in the glossary. So these uh, do need to be teacher graded. And then unit three or module three <laughs> starts with coordinating conjunctions. And again, there's the intro module, this time word families group two, Quizlet, uh, these are all H5 or Quizlet and then H5P activities, which is a fill in the blank and the um, dictation. I'm going to show you just the fill in the blank so you can just see what they look like. So in here, um, students do get, get hints. So they have to fill in the correct word, but they can look here and um, get a hint to what the word would mean and fill it in. So they just fill that in and click submit. And then the dictation, you know, here um, is dictating some sentences. So they get two tries. There's um, normal speed, and then here it'll be um, at a slower speed, so they can hear it twice. And of course, they can repeat it too. And then it gives them a little hint. Make sure they check their spelling and punctuation. Because sometimes if you don't put a period at the end, it will mark it wrong. So this is on three or two, excuse me. All right. So then in, um, and then there's the, you know, Canvas quiz. And then the grammar part, we're talking about types of sentences, and they'll be looking at, uh, conjunctions and then introduction to those coordinating conjunctions, so the fanboys. So they'll, this lists the coordinating conjunctions and all the, you know, the. Uh... So I have the fanboys broken down, you know, what these stand for, right? The F and the A and so on. And then it explains them and a little bit of a, an example of how they're used. the fanboys. Okay, let me move on here. All right, and then they have quizzes. So we're looking at independent clauses, which is covered in here. 
in the grammar part, um, some coordinating conjunctions, and then another uh, coordinating conjunctions writing quiz. And then practice, writing practice, so writing sentences of fanboys. Uh, what do they, what do you do every day? Um, here they have to describe a picture and describe a person. And in this case, the discussion is just uh, writing in their language. So they have to post a discussion about, you know, did they study writing in their language? And then the module test. And then unit four starts subordinating conjunctions. And now we're into word families group three and same Quizlet fill in exercise dictation and a Canvas quiz. And now the grammar is talking about subordinating conjunctions and also about what sentence fragments are and what run-on sentences are. And then there are quizzes in Canvas on each of these. And then an H5P dictation related to subordinating clauses. So I put this here because it's not under vocabulary. It relates to this topic, the grammar topic. And then some writing activity. So this is writing some sentences with cause and effect. Um, tell about a time you lost something. This many of you might be familiar with, but it's how the wolves changed rivers uh, when they were introduced into Yellowstone. So then they need to write a description and, um, you know, about what happened about this video. And then discussion a person you admire, and then some new words and the test. All right, so now we're in five, and this is more uh, what I mentioned, kind of the meat of a lot of these things and in writing the transition words and transitional phrases and so on. So this uh, unit is broken up into three. So there's the introduction module, and now it's the first advanced vocabulary list module, not module, page, glossary page, and then Quizlet. And this is a fill in the blank quiz dictation and also a crossword with this vocabulary. And then this is the transitional words and phrases chart. This is the one I mentioned. It's also in the resources. So this is a chart that breaks down. Um, so it's a good reference for them. It breaks down all these words by types. So all the time and sequences, uh, time and sequence transitional words. If they're conjunctions, they would be here, but there aren't any. So it's dependent words, transition words. So as you go down, space and location, rank and importance, and then cause and effect, it shows these are cause and effect conjunctions, dependent words, transition words, and so on. And all the ones, you know, there's adding information, comparison, contrast, all these things. So this is a, a resource for them. And it, for them to check. For students. Okay, sorry for the scrolling. No. All right, and then there's an introduction on, on transitional words and phrases. And then each, uh, the next two, so 5A, there's a list of the function of all the transition words, which is, somewhat what's in the chart, but it's broken down here. And again, there's a little video uh, PowerPoint uh, about that. And then the purpose of all these words and what and their functions. And then it's broken down by one by one. So the ones for adding information with an example, um, like dependent words, transitional words. So it breaks these down with examples. So they're all here giving examples. So this again, when students want to write something and they want to find words to choose from, they can come here and choose uh, and learn how, to, how these work and how they can improve writing. So 5A, because there's so many of these, 5A is broken down Oops. Yeah, there we go. Um, by the time and sequence and space and location. And then there are quizzes related to both of these uh, types of transition words. And then for writing, they have to describe a picture, describe a room in their house, a market scene, and what happened. 
and they'll be able to use um, either time and sequence or space and location words, depending. So if they're de describing a room in their house, for example, they would be using space and location type of uh, phrases. And then the discussion in this one's just about what they've learned. And there's no, the unit test is at the end of 5B. So 5B now we'll talk about cause and effect dependent words and transitions and rank order of importance. And then quizzes uh, related to some of these and including adding information. And then uh, there's some writing here on uh, using cause and effect, uh, giving directions, what to do in an earthquake, which we just had yesterday and you guys in Sacramento, I don't know how that was for you. Um, and then your favorite recipe and step-by-step. -step. So this would be like a rank order type of activity and then writing about the future. And then some discussion about why learning English is important. And here's the module test for, uh, for five. And this is based on the advanced vocabulary list one. And then um, module six is starts on paragraphs. So again, introduction, now it's advanced vocabulary list group two and same activities. So there's a quizlet, fill in the blank, dictation and crossword. And now the grammar will be about um, paragraphs and writing topic sentences, what makes a paragraph, and then a little bit about compare and contrast trans transition words and phrases. All right, so these have some um, videos as well. So same, you know, the same type of instructional PowerPoint here that covers the same thing that's written down here. So they can they can listen, watch the PowerPoint, and also read what's written in here. So it gives them a few different ways to access the material and reinforcement. Down back down to six. Okay. And then some of these, I'm trying to remember now which one it is. Some of these, yes, um, I have found in other places and I did get permission from the people that did this, Amal. I actually wrote to her and asked her if I could use her video because I liked her explanation. And she said, yes, please. So used by permission. And it's sometimes tricky when things are on YouTube because they, you know, sometimes they get taken down. So that's one of the, one of the risks, but she seemed to sound like she wasn't going to do that. I'm just going to keep it there. All right. And then there's some writing. These are some videos. So there's a, this elephant in the credit card is a little, um, it's actually an advertisement for MasterCard, but it's a little video on, on, you know, they just have to explain what happens and writing about that. And then there's a little video about uh, what success means. So this is, um, you know, they watch the, the little video and this is actually one that I made quite a while ago. And then um, they click start assignment and write assignment. So it tells them here what they're supposed, what does success mean to you? And then as I mentioned, all the writing assignments have this rubric. It's all the same rubric. If you want to change it for some reason for each assignment, maybe you want to put something different um, in the teacher view, you can you can edit it, obviously not as a student. But when you're in teacher mode, you have a little pencil icon here, which would allow you to edit this if you wanted to. So for all the writing assignments, it's the same rubric in, throughout here throughout the course. All right, back to down six. Okay, so then they, um, and then this is just a story. It's a Puerto Rican story, but I, what I did is I put this in here with no connectors. So students would, 
you know, asking students to read it out loud. What does it sound like when, when you just have uh, sentences that aren't connected with any kind of conjunction or transition? And then um, I asked them to rewrite it with connectors. And then you would want to keep this hidden. This is the answer. And explain there's more than one way, but it's really just so that they can get a sense of what something sounds like with no connectors versus what something sounds like with connectors. And you can, in your own course, you can set up prerequisites. So you could keep this hidden until the student has completed this activity. And once they've completed this activity, then they would be able to see the answer to that. And then there's just a writing describe a place you will never forget. So then they, this is a writing activity. And then in discussion, the same theme of what does success mean to you? And then the module test. And then seven starts talking about graphic organizers and then more about paragraphs. So same structure, introduction, uh, you know, the quizlets and the activities on the glossary all the same. Um, I do want to show you. So this is using some different graphic organizers. A little bit about what brainstorming is. Um, talking more about topic sentences and controlling ideas. And then quizzes related to that. And then uh, writing using a timeline. Um, an easy lunch where they have to write uh, some sort of process in, in making something. And then some of you may know this video about Rara the penguin. So here they have to watch the video and then describe what happens, you know, basically retell the story. And then this is putting sentences in order. And I'm gonna open that for a minute because this is a, another H5P type of activity. So this is a, a paragraph and what they have to do is basically using these little arrows, uh, put these sentences in order. And I give them a hint to look for what the topic sentence is and the controlling idea and what the concluding sentence would be just to help them kind of get started. And then again, there's, this is actually just for the teacher. So I would keep this unpublished, but I left the whole paragraph in here just to make it easier for the teacher. So you know how it's supposed to go instead of having to do the activity and figure it out yourself, you can just check there. But that this, you can make this available to students after they've done the activity, if you would like to, but they'll get the answers as they're doing it, right? When they submit, they'll know which order is the correct order. So they won't really need that. It's really more for you or for the instructor. Okay. And okay, and then there's another um, activity using a Venn diagram where they compare and contrast. And then a discussion on using graphic organizers and then what they've learned in this unit and the test. And then module eight is informal writing, same structure here. And um, the grammar is about writing emails. So there's writing an email, writing a work email, and then doing some descriptive writing. And here is a quiz, just choosing a topic and supporting sentences and writing practice, writing an email message, writing, describing a dream house and talking about their first impression of the US when they first came here. And then discussion, how often do you use email? and then the module test, and then formal writing, same beginning structure. We're now on list five. And then more on, on reviewing paragraphs and topic sentences and information uh, in, on persuasive and narrative writing. And then a quiz on there. And then different writing activities, writing an email letter of complaint, writing a formal letter of complaint, and then some videos uh, describing this. Uh, this is a video on, uh, they have to describe what happens here. Writing a feeling narrative, writing a folktale that they know about. So they read this Raven story, but then they need to write their own uh, folktale from their own culture or one they know about. 
and then writing a description using some sensory adjectives, sharing an experience, and then the test. And then the very last unit, unit 10, um, same structure, but now we're looking at more essays and more formal types of writing. This introduces thesis statements and more about essays, steps you take when you want to write, like an outline or what steps would you do first, and more about academic writing. And then a quiz on topic sentences. They have to decide, is it a topic sentence or a thesis statement? And then these are some other writing an opinion essay about uh, using a cell phone while driving, about a grandparent or another relative, or um, I put in there also another older person that had an influence on you. About climate change, this is a video from Greta Turnberg, and then they have to write an opinion about climate change. Um, this is a reading about computer games, and uh, they have to write an opinion whether computer games can incite violence or not. And this is a video um, actually from KQED about trash on the spin cycle. So they need to write about, uh, watch the video and write about that. And then discussion about the trash problem. This is kind of a worldwide problem. Things they've learned overall in the course that they can share and then the test. And that's the end of the course. So does anybody have any questions? Because we have about 10 minutes um, for questions. So I'll keep my share thing open for the time being. If you have a question, go ahead and um, you can post in the chat or you can just go ahead and speak. Yeah, okay, I didn't. So I see Anna. Oh, yeah. Go Anna ahead. Raised her hand, yeah. Go ahead, Anna. Yeah. And go ahead and use your microphone. Yeah, I'm Annalisa. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, fine. Okay. Yeah, I'm wondering how many weeks is this course? This is, it depends how fast you want to take it. I mean, it could be, you know, I would say 10 weeks would be kind of fast. Um, I would say probably a semester. I would divide it up if I were teaching this. Um, I would probably divide it up and be supplementing too, but I would, yeah. Yeah, this, cause it just seems like an incredible amount of content and I'm just- it, There's a lot, yeah, it would be, that. you know, probably I would say more like at least two weeks per unit. Yeah. So, yeah, well, I'm just thinking, yeah, I'm like, and also the level, because I teach at City College and not in adult ed, but we have non-credit and credit. And, um, this is, um, you know, a, a couple or three courses put together. So it's interesting. Um, so I'm curious about the level. Um, are these students who are coming in with lots of speaking and vocabulary and they just haven't learned how to write? I mean, is that the focus, the demographic that you're really focused on? Um, I used to teach this course with a, with a, a you know, advanced ESL level. And um, I mean, they needed the vocabulary and some of them, you know, had, I mean, you, you know how it is in an adult ed class, you've got all levels of education. So some had um, writing in their own culture. So they had some concept, even though it might not be exactly the same, but they had some concept about writing skills. And for some, it was pretty new. So it's it's varied. But I used to teach this as a, as a blended class. So we would do this course plus what I would, um, so I would teach a lot of this content live as well. And then we would practice, we'd go to the lab because students rarely were able to really do this at home. Some did, some didn't, but I would often just take, when I was teaching, I was not teaching it online alone, but I've had other teachers or other teachers that were using it really as just an online class. And, um, so but I, I would spread it out because yeah, there is a lot of content. I just have one more quick follow-up question. I see other people's questions in the chat. I just wanted to ask um, if you said you've taught it really uh, as a more of a like the Zoom synchronous and asynchronous or hybrid yourself and other people have taught it asynchronous. I'm wondering, do you have any, I'd be really curious about the completion rate, how, how many students actually go through this and complete and um, do you have any stats at all or? Uh. 
I don't have any Anybody? specific, yeah, I don't have any specific statistics. I mean, when, in adult ed, it's a little tricky because, you know, not all students stay for the whole time, right? Yeah. Because we have not. a lot of stop in, stop out type of situations, but. Um, yeah, certainly a ton of resources for them. So yeah, I mean, that, not that that's the, the point, but yeah, there's it's kind of, it's all here. So very impressive. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, all right, let me see here. There's there are a bunch of questions here that I'm like Prince, Princess, could you um, let's um let's work our way through the questions here. Okay, so thank first, you because I don't know where we are, yeah. Yeah, okay. So first question, just remind us again how to get to the course. So if we can just show the steps. Oh, okay. Um, you know what? I forgot to do that anyway. Yeah. Um yeah, thanks for the reminder too. Yeah, so the the place you would find this course, if you go to where this menu bar and you go to the far left, it says CDLC actually up there. And then you just scroll down where you see um, this commons it has this little C with an arrow and it says commons. So just go to that area. And I'm gonna have to move a few things here. All right, so when you get to this page, this is the general commons of anybody that's put something in here. So to find the, um, the California Adult Education, you can click on this filter and then just scroll down so you can see there's all these grade levels, et cetera. But we want to be down here where it says shared with and go down to where it says California Adult Education Canvas Commons. So that's where we want to be. And Francisca, before you leave there, so so everybody look at this view that Francisca's showing. So again, what we explained in the beginning is that this is a this is kind of a, a subset of the general Canvas Commons. So this is a adult education dedicated Canvas Commons space that OTAN is helping to um, manage. So I just actually in the chat, um, I replied to Marion with a link to the form that your agency should complete, send that to us, or actually when you complete the form, it'll come to us. So that's how it all works. And then that indicates your agency's interest in being a part of this adult education dedicated commons. We will work with your Canvas admin to basically um, turn on the switch as it were, so that you will then see this option when you come to the commons so that you can be directed to this dedicated space and then that's where this course and other courses will be available. So they're not available in the general commons. They're only available in this dedicated space. So again, if you have questions about that, I'll put the email address again in the chat. It's aecanvas at scoey.net. Email us if you're having trouble. If you still don't quite understand what I just explained, we'll work it, we'll work through the steps so that we can get your agency attached to this commons. Um, okay. So that's that. Let's go back up here, um, Francisca. Oh, I was just going to show them. So then, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Okay. So this is where the courses are. So if you wanted to find it, they're here. Exactly. Yeah. OTAN's trying to get as many um, Canvas courses on this site as possible. And then again, once you all join this common space, you will be able to share your Canvas. Sorry, you'll be able to share your Canvas materials with other adult educators in California. So. Yay us. Okay. Yeah, this is great. Also, just a quick note on this. Once you download the course and you have your own course, if there are updates, if I end up making an update to the master or any of these courses with updates, um, they get pushed out so that you'll get a you'll get a flag that's gonna say this course was updated. You don't have to do anything. It's just my understanding is it'll just it's just automatic. Yeah, those those updates will be pushed out to your um to, to your, your copies. Yeah. 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 Which is okay. fantastic, which was not the case with Moodle. Yes. Okay. A uh, Francisca question um, is Robin asks, is there anything about citing articles or sources? Uh, no, I didn't include that. That's a good idea though. <laughs> but okay. no, I did I didn't I didn't include that in the course. Okay. Um, you sort of answered this question already, Francisca, but again, um, Adrian asks, um, is this synchronous? Do the students work on it through through their own or through this course on their own? I think you gave some examples from your own experience. So it's really meant, I think, for you to decide as, as an instructor how you would like to use this course. Right. I mean, it can be asynchronous. I didn't, I used it as a mixture, right? It's a hybrid. So, yeah. you know, I did classroom instruction. And then students, some worked on it at home, 
you know, some students that have several jobs didn't do it at home. So I also gave them lab time to work on it. Okay. So very flexible in, mm -hmm. in the delivery of the course. Okay. Um, Mariana asks, um, how did you choose the vocabulary for each module? I just decided to focus on on the two things, on the word families and on um, what was the, it's, I think it's called the academic uh, word list. And so I just divided them up. You know, that, that academic word list has a lot, but I just chose to make, have six different lists uh, that I chose from to make those glossaries. So, yeah. Okay. It was just a... And then I think that's it in terms of chat questions. We still have a, a couple of minutes if anyone has a chat question or if you want to come on mic and ask Francisca your question directly. We have the course author right here. So let's take advantage of her, uh, her knowledge and expertise here. Any other questions? I'm going to stop share for a second and just bring the PowerPoint back up just so you can get the other. Uh, but go ahead, any, if there are any other questions. And yeah, actually, Francisca, maybe as we're wrapping up here, if you want That's to right. just, yeah, you want to talk about the evaluation, yeah. Yeah, so I just wanted to make sure you you uh, do the evaluation here. And then also, um, which, Anthony, this gets sent to them, does it not, as well? Yeah, what um, will happen is we'll, um, we'll take attendance um, after the, um, after the uh, webinar is complete. And then you should, within the next day, get a reminder about the evaluation. But you also, you can take a screenshot here of the, or sorry, you can scan the QR code. Um, I'll put a link to the page in the chat here. Give me one second. Mm -hmm. Evaluation.otan.us. Yeah, we do appreciate you taking the time to complete the evaluation. Um, we appreciate your feedback and, um, how the webinar went, anything we can do to make it better. So um, there was one, oh wait. Let me There's also, um, I was going to just say this, this is also a slide that you added <laughs> that we wanted added if you want this workshop repeated. Yeah, right. So contact, we, did, yeah. we did give, um, we did kind of a quick run through of the course here, but if you do want to have something a little bit more um, longer and dedicated to folks at your agency, you can always reach out to us, support at OTN.us. Um, we can work with you to schedule a training or maybe for a regional group of um, instructors if you're, you know, like in your consortium, for example. So, um, okay, anything, we're at time. Any other questions before we sign off here? Um, Francisca does have the our uh, contact email there, support at uh, support at otan.us <laughs> or was there yeah i'm sorry i stopped you had, sharing so yeah to memorize it very quickly but support at otan.us you can always follow up with us with any questions um about today's webinar um or any other anything that um you still want to ask after today's webinar is finished so um yvonne do you send pd certificates yes like i said we'll take the um we'll run through um the attendance again um, and then once we check off the attendance, um, we'll be able to send you a certificate for your participation. Rebecca asks about the add-on tools. Right. Okay. So um, once your agency is a part of the Adult Ed Canvas Commons, then we need to work with your Canvas admin at your agency to basically turn on those tools. So Francisco talked about the H5P um, activities. Learn 360 activities, again, not in this course, but in last week's um, advanced ESL course. We, um, the other courses that OTAN is getting onto this Canvas Commons space, the Putting English to Work courses, the EL Civic courses. So they may have these add-ons that so we need to work with your admin to basically turn on the add-on. Um, and then once those are turned on and enabled, then you'll be able to get that fully functional, you'll be able to get those fully functional activities within your copies of the courses that you're downloading from that Canvas Commons uh, space. So Rebecca, um, why, I'm gonna, why don't you email us? Okay. Yeah, email us at- At the support or at the AE Canvas? Um, do it at, support, at the AE Canvas, that would be better. Okay. Yeah, and there's that email again in the chat. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. 
Okay, any final questions? Otherwise, thank you again so much, Francisca, for presenting today on the right stuff. Um, we hope that all of you will take advantage of the course as well as other materials in the Canvas Commons space. Um, and I think if there aren't any other questions, we'll wrap up today's webinar. Thanks again, Francisca. Thank you all for coming today. Reach out to us if you have any questions about this course or other um, OTAN courses. And otherwise, we will see you. Maybe we'll see some of you at the Cape Summit next week. Um, we will be there. We'll have a table there. Please stop by. We'd love to chat with you, hear about what's going on at your agency. Um, otherwise, we'll see you at the next OTAN event. All right, great. Thank you, everyone. All right, thanks, everyone. We'll see you later.